Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain how to create a dynamic histogram chart. So this is a histogram or frequency distribution chart here and I've made it interactive by adding this scroll bar control to the bottom and when we click this scroll bar control to the right that will increase the number of groups here that we see within the histogram and when we click this back to the left that will decrease the number of groups and of course the data is distributed across those groups. So this makes it much easier for you and your users to explore the data and also control the number of groups they're seeing here in the chart. And I will show the data behind this chart and explain more about how histograms work. Now you might be wondering what Clippy is doing over here. And uh, this was part of a contest that we did called Excel Hash. And Excel Hash is a contest with other Excel YouTube channels to create a solution using four main ingredients or features of Excel. So this is based on the popular TV shows like Chopped, where the chefs are given some main ingredients that they must prepare their own dish with. And we're doing something similar, a contest here, where we have four ingredients that we have to use or four main features that we have to use to create a solution in Excel. And those ingredients are the max function, the frequency function, a form control, and a 3D model. So Clippy over here is a 3D model, and I'll explain more about him later in the video, but let's first take a look at the frequency distribution chart and how this is set up. So over to the left of the chart here, we have all of the setup work uh, for the histogram. Now this looks like a lot, uh, and I'll explain how it all works, and I'll also put a link to this file in the description below the video so you can go ahead and download it and plug your own data into it. And of course, in this video, I'm going to go over the main components of this chart, but I also have a detailed article that explains how to build this step by step. And I'll also put a link to that in the description below this video. So here we have the source data for the chart here in this section. We have some parameters up here that help with the setup work. And then the actual source data that this chart is based on is over here on the data tab. So this is just a list of names and ages. Of course, your data could have more columns than this, but I just simplified this because we're distributing this uh, data uh, by the age group. So we're creating age groups uh, within our histogram here, and we're seeing how many people are in each of those age groups. So this range over here of chart data is just summarizing that data using the frequency function. And then we also have a few parameters up here. We're pulling in the minimum value using the min function here. Also the maximum value from that age column using the max function. So there's one of our ingredients, one of our Excel hash ingredients right there using the max function. Uh, we're also calculating the number of bins and this is linked to our slider uh, scroll bar down here. And uh, that just links to that. There are no macros being used in this solution here. Uh, we don't need to use any macros for this, which is nice. And then we also have the bin size, which is just a calculation, uh, taking the max minus the min and dividing that by the bin count. And so we're using these parameters up here for some of the formulas down here. Uh, first one will be the bins array, and this is used for our frequency function. And this again is just calculating the maximum number within each range. So within each group there, we wanna calculate the maximum number. And again, that'll be based on the bin count and the bin size here, and also the max as well. And uh, that will give us the maximum number within each of those ranges. And then the bin name over here, this is just used in the labels of the chart. You can see the labels right here on the X axis. And again, same thing, that's just a formula that gives us that range between the minimum number or the last max number plus one and uh, the max in this row here to just give us that age range for each of the groups. And then finally, in this column here, we have the frequency function, and that's just returning or calculating the count of the number of people or the number of rows in each of those groups or each of those age ranges. And we use that column in the data series of our chart here for the values of each column. And I'll do another video that explains the frequency function in more detail. It is entered as an array formula using control shift enter. So it's a bit more of an advanced function. Uh, you could also use a count ifs function as an alternative to frequency, but it is a great one to know.
So let's take a look at how the histogram chart is set up. Now this is actually just a regular column chart in Excel, and I'm using dynamic named ranges as the source range for the chart. So to see that, we can open the name manager. We'll go to the formulas tab on the ribbon and then click the name manager button. Keyboard shortcut is control F3. That will open the name manager window. And here I've defined a few named ranges, RNG count and RNG groups. And I did that by just clicking the new button, uh, giving it a name. And then we're also using a formula uh, which creates this dynamic named range. We're using the offset function here. And the offset function is just uh, starting at cell E10, going down one cell. And then we're also specifying the height of that range here, which is cell C5. The value in cell C5 is our bin count. And that's currently set to five. But when we click the scroll bar control, this number changes, and then that will change the height of our range here, or what's going to be included in the chart. So currently only these five rows are included in the chart. But again, as we change, click our slider, the bin count will change and that will make this either taller or shorter to just include those rows. So we'll go ahead and close the name manager. And we can also see this on the chart. If we click on the chart here, of course, you could see the source range over here. And then if we go up to the design tab and click uh, select data, that will open the data source window. And if we edit this series here, we can also see our named range referenced uh, right here for the chart series. And we have one uh, for the labels over here as well. Here's our named range, RNG groups uh, for the labels. So each of those are dynamic named ranges that really control the source range of the chart, again, as our slider is clicked. If you're enjoying this video, please click that big red subscribe button below the video to subscribe to our channel and also click the notification bell icon there to get notified when new videos are published. So now let's take a look at the setup for the scroll bar control. So to insert a scroll bar like this, we're going to use a form control. And again, this is another one of our ingredients for Excel hash. So we'll go to the developer tab on the ribbon. If you don't see the developer tab, I have a whole nother video that explains how to enable it. And within the controls group here, we have the insert dropdown and we have this group of form controls and we chose the scroll bar control right here. You can just click that and then you can actually go and draw it on the sheet and that will insert the scroll bar control. Now there is a little bit of setup work here, which I'll show on our existing scroll bar control. We'll just go ahead and right click that and choose format control. That'll bring up this format control window and we'll see the control tab selected right here. And here we have all the properties for the control itself. So the current value that it's set at, the minimum value, the maximum value, the incremental change, which is uh, the change that happens when we click the arrows out here at the end of the control. The page change is what happens when we click between the arrows, kind of in the slider area here. Uh, it'll change by two. Of course, you can uh, modify these to anything you'd like. And then the cell link is the uh, cell that's linked to the control. So when we click the scroll bar, uh, cell C5 will change and display the value based on the click that we do within the control. And that's really what makes this uh, whole thing interactive is that cell link to the control. Uh, because when we click that, that again will change the number of bins and that changes the value in this cell here. And then all of our formulas down here, including the frequency function, are based on that bin count. And those formulas drive the entire chart. So again, no macros are necessary here. We just have a standard form control and then formulas that create the chart. And then finally, I have to talk about our 3D object, which is Clippy. So over here we have Clippy, and this is a 3D object, which is a new feature of Excel. If you have Excel 2016 and an Office 365 subscription or any later version of Excel than that, then you will be able to use these 3D objects. And we can now see these if we go to the Insert tab of the ribbon here. And in the Illustrations group, we have these uh, 3D models or 3D objects section here. And we can just click on that and that will open up this new window with uh, 3D models and we can see some categories here. So if you want to add a dinosaur to your spreadsheet for some reason, you can go in here and click one of these and that will be uh, then insert and we can actually insert that into our sheet. Now this might take a few seconds to do. 
these are uh, very large files, or they can be large files. Uh, there we go, there's our dinosaur there. Uh, so we now have him, we can move him around, and we can also uh, kind of change the tilt in the pan on this guy, so we can uh, move him around and see all the sides of our dinosaur. So not sure exactly what the use case is gonna be for uh, Excel models uh, for this, but these are available to us. Now we can also create our own 3D models, which might be more useful. And uh, we can also do this at uh, this website. I'll pull it up here, which is uh, Remix 3D. It's a Microsoft site where you can go find other models that uh, people have created. You can kind of scroll here and browse through these different models. You can also, I just searched uh, Clippy, found Clippy here. So here's a few different uh, versions of Clippy. And then I downloaded one of these and we can also open it up in our Paint 3D program. This is a new Windows 10 program that we can open it up and actually go modify it here. So we can, uh, of course, look at Clippy, move them around. And I also added uh, just a, a text box here with some text as well. That's also 3D within this image. So you can go play with that if you have extra time at work for some reason and you want to do this you can absolutely do all this and save that and then bring it into your excel file so if i jump back to excel here within the illustrations tab within 3d models there's a drop down and you can choose from file and then go find uh, that file that you created and bring it into excel so that's what we have right here here's the the final product of this which is Clippy. And as it said, if you click on him, uh, you can then go vote for me. So here's the Excel hash voting site and all of the different YouTube channels that are participating in this contest. And I'm right down here and I'd love for you to give me a five-star review uh, from Michelin Star Review uh, for this dynamic histogram. And of course, please uh, go watch everyone else's uh, video as well. Everyone's done a video with these ingredients, these four main ingredients, and uh, go check them out and vote for them as well. I know they all did an amazing job, so give them uh, a great vote too. It's all just for fun here and of course bragging rights. So we want you to vote and participate this and participate in this and we look forward to doing it again in the future. So I, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learn a lot and are able to uh, apply this dynamic histogram in your work. It'll definitely uh, be very valuable for your users because they'll be able to quickly control the bins here. You don't have to go back and make changes. They can control the bin sizes here. You don't necessarily have to include Clippy if you don't want to, uh, but it might add some fun to your spreadsheet. So thanks again for watching. Of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.